Hello, this is Dr. G from naturalfoodsdiet.org. If you've been buying any genetically modified food or processed food, you need to listen to this information. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm really critical of GMOs. In fact, when I do my health coaching, one of the first steps is I have my clients avoid all food with any genetically modified ingredients. Over the years, I've seen this one simple change positively affect the health of many, many people. But even without the adverse health effects, I've still always had a fear of GMOs. I've had many pro-GMO commenters on my video blogs, and they describe my view as an irrational fear that has no basis in science. And I stopped to think about it, and I thought, well, maybe they're right. I mean, I didn't really seem to have any basis for my intuition. And maybe I should just believe all these scientists out there that are constantly saying all the evidence is that the GMOs are safe. Well, I wanted to tell you about an article I came across recently. It was a paper written by Nassim Taleb, who teaches at NYU. And he's an expert in the area of risk engineering. You can find a reference for the rough draft of this paper on my blog at naturalfoodsdiet.org. Now, Taleb said that skepticism, like mine, is healthy and even necessary for survival. In his paper, Taleb makes the case that the precautionary principle is used to make decisions that ensure survival. The precautionary principle is put in place when statistical evidence is limited and it's used in probability and insurance, what they call ruin problems. Now when we're talking about nature and genetically modified organisms, ruin problems turn out to be ecocide. And this is the irreversible termination of life at some level. Now, one scenario is it could be the termination of life on the entire planet. The natural system of reproduction of species and genetic mutations over the last three billion years with the trillions of variations actually has a zero risk of ecocide. And how do we know this? Well, that is pretty simple. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Now, when you look at the tinkering with breeding and genetic mutations out in nature, statistically on the distribution curve, the tail of the curve, the tails of the curve are what are called thin tails. And this is actually true even with mankind's intervention where we you know, do selective breeding and we do other bottom-up tinkering with these complex systems. Now, GMOs are top-down changes, and that's placing the genes from one species to another, and then also making a sequence of changes. And this creates a fat tail distribution curve. Now, with the top-down changes, the aggregate of the changes is much more severe than the individual ones that occur in nature. So what this means is there is a real risk for ruin or ecocide. Now we always hear the pro-GMO experts saying there's no evidence for harm. But if we apply the precautionary principle, it doesn't require any evidence because the evidence will come too late and the changes at that point will be irreversible. So even if the probability is small, what really matters is probability times the consequences. And when the consequences are the possible destruction of all life on Earth, or maybe just the humans, then it's really not irrational to overreact to a small probability. So the bottom line for me is this. Fear GMOs and fear them beyond their short-term health effects. And it's a very healthy, rational fear. Now, in my opinion, the government needs to step in and ban this activity. And since our government doesn't seem to be smart enough to do this, I think you and I need to take action. 
How can you help the survival of life on Earth and prevent ecocide? Just refuse to buy any product that contains any genetically modified organisms. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching.